think about this. Um, a typical daily income in Baseco of the people that I talked to was 70 pesos. 70 pesos is the daily income. Why would you buy water that is worth 7 pesos per container when your money is only 70 pesos? And that's the reason why the projects that we've created in Baseco are those addressing the issues that um, they're facing. It's a multi-layered issue, you see? And that's what we're attacking as well in social health. That we start with policies, and from policies, then you go to structures, and then structures, and then you create um, a better life for them. I'm an anthropologist, and I am a social health um, studies rig lead for the, for the research center on social sciences and education. So social health is an interdisciplinary unit that attempts to understand health issues that is possibly um, identified with social issues as well. This is different from your um, studies of health in the medical field because with them, they're focused on pathologies, epidemiology and such. With social health, we're saying that health is also socially constructed and health vulnerabilities are socially constructed. With social health, our agenda is to look into how communities and human groups are made vulnerable to certain diseases, to certain health issues. So um, it could be urban places, urban poor areas, but it could also be in rural areas. The array is quite wide, but the main focus is how is society, policies, and um, economy affecting the health access of individuals. Whatever profession you are in, as long as you deal with the intersection between society and health, you can definitely work in social health. So we have um, people coming from medicine, pharmacy, we have people from nursing, even occupational therapy. We, we have all kinds of people and then they work with social scientists on the other hand. We just don't do research. Because the end goal of social health uh, studies is that we attack various structures of society so that we could better the experiences of people who are more, more vulnerable to diseases. We also do actual intervention. So for example, in my field site, Baseco Compound, one of the things that I've uh, come to realize is that apart from people not having food to eat, they also have no access to medicine because with a small income per day, you wouldn't think of buying medicine. What I did was to organize a source of funding from people whom I've worked with and people who have read my work, and we created what is called the Clinica Tomas. It's a free medicine dispensary unit. We are able to provide community members with free medicine. We have served more than 300 families because of the Clinica Tomas. Up until now, that um, unit is still running, and yearly we do medical interventions to places that do not even see doctors. In anthropology, we call it engaged anthropology. So engaged anthropology is when um, anthropologists like myself would not just be um, focused on academic output, but would also be engaged in the lives of the community members uh, through projects and policy development. So it's a long-standing relationship. My relationship in Baseco is now six years in counting. It's very important to do interdisciplinary studies now on health. We cannot just focus on epidemiology per se. We have to look into how are diseases being felt and understood by people. We have to understand diseases differently now because diseases are not just biological experiences. These are social experiences as well. So, for the academe, I think it would be highly powerful now to have, let's say, people in medicine or allied health to join social scientists in understanding how are diseases, illnesses experienced in the community level. Academics can only go so far as to do the study and probably propose a project. Without funding, those projects would come into fruition. And this is the reason why Clinica Tomas came about because there is a group of Phil M in Washington that decided that maybe this project of bringing a health um, dispensary unit in an urban poor, maybe that's a good chance to take. 
And they did. For the past two years now, they're supporting that. They gave us money to buy the medicine so that people can get it for free. So the private sector, hand in hand with the academe, can better lives of people. It's not just a one-way thing.